This viscast will look at a problem with electric potential for point charges. To interpret this question, we need to remember that we're looking at electric potential for point charges. And recalling that potential is a scalar, that means we don't have to worry about direction, we're simply going to add the electric potential from whatever charges form part of our charge distribution. Let's develop our solution further, perhaps with a diagram. So here is our x-axis, here might be our origin. We have these two charges, one placed at x equals plus a, and one placed at x equals minus a. And these have the same magnitude but opposite sign. So let's make this one here minus q, and this one here plus q. The question is not specific about which one is which. And we want to look at some location out here, a value uh, of x for that location along the x-axis where x is larger than plus a. You need to recall that the expression for the electric potential from a point charge at some distance r from a point charge is the Coulomb constant k multiplied by the charge divided by the distance we are away from the point charge. So electric potential for a point charge uh, varies like 1 over the distance. Move to the evaluation step to try to find this expression. Our potential here at some location x is going to be simply the sum of the potential from the positive charge plus the potential from the negative charge. And in this case that will be for the positive charge here it will be k times plus q divided by the distance between our location x and that positive charge. And you can see provided x sits out here uh, larger than plus a, that distance will be simply x plus a. And we're going to add to that the potential from the negative charge, which will be now k times negative q. And the distance from our location x to that negative q charge will be x minus a. And that's pretty much the solution, but we can do some simplification of this particular answer. Let's take out kq as our common factor, and what we have in here is 1 over x plus a uh, minus 1 over x minus a. And we can simplify that a little bit further by putting them over a common denominator. In this case we can put that over x plus a times x minus a. And for that first term there, we're going to need to multiply by x minus a to get this common denominator. And for the second one here, by minus x plus a. And we should be able to see now that this denominator can be written as the difference of two squares, x squared minus a squared, when you expand that out. Um, on the top here, we have x minus x. So the x is actually cancel on the top line. And we have minus a minus a, which actually gives us minus 2a. We'll put the k and the q and the a there. And that's actually what we were asked to find. That's an expression for our potential at some location x from those two charges. Let's try to assess what this answer tells us. Uh, one thing to make sure we've done correctly is is kept all of our uh, variables in the right place as we've been doing this simplification of our expression. So let's make sure that our units make sense. Uh, let's check up here. We've got the Coulomb constant k and if you look that up or, or remember what the units must be, remember in, in Coulomb's law we're basically trying to get a, a force from a combination of charges and distances and so that, uh, that Coulomb constant uh, ends up having a, a units of newtons meter squared per coulomb squared and then we're multiplying that k by q which will be in units of coulombs and then we're multiplying that by a which is a distance so that will be in units of meters so that's the numerator of this expression and on the denominator we have x squared and a squared so that will be in units of meters squared so that meter squared there cancels that one there that coulomb cancels one of those coulombs there and the units that we end up with here a newton meter per coulomb and you might remember that a newton times a meter well a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared so a newton times a meter is a kilogram meter squared per second squared 
which you might recall is exactly what one joule is. So that's a joule per coulomb is what this combination of units can be written as and that's exactly what electric potential is. Potential energy per unit charge and this is potential energy in joules per unit charge in coulombs. So our units seem to check on our answer. Uh, we might also like to have a, a quick look at, at the behavior of this expression that we've got here. In particular what happens as this distance becomes very large compared to A. So if we go some very long distance out here along the x-axis compared to the separation here which is basically 2 times A. So in our expression here for V of X we can see on the top line uh, there's no X at all so that will remain as it is. Um, and on the bottom line here as X becomes very large compared to A then X squared minus A squared will get closer and closer to, to just being X squared like a million squared minus one squared is pretty close to a million squared. So our potential will look a little bit like minus 2k qa over x squared. And that's what you might expect. This uh, combination we have up here is actually an electric dipole. These two equal but opposite sign charges here, um, closely spaced, or spaced at some distance apart. Uh, form is what we call an electric dipole and the potential for an electric dipole at some large distance from the dipole drops off like 1 over the distance squared which is what our, our expression here actually shows us and you might also recall or if you haven't seen it yet you might like to go and, and double check that if we take the derivative of this expression uh, for potential that should give us something about the field remember the electric field involves taking the, uh, the derivative, the spatial derivative of the potential and so when we take the derivative of this we'll get something like 1 over x cubed and indeed we expect the electric field for a, a dipole to drop off like 1 over distance cubed. So that looks correct as well.